Hey guys, welcome back to RV Barn Dominium. Well, today, the old uh, brain told me that uh, I wanted to start trying out buffing and uh, waxing and pretty much trying to restore the finish on the RV. There are some spots, especially here on the nose of the, the good old Ace, the, the nose section on the front and one side of the RV, really took the sun hard. We had it stored outside for a couple of years and you know, and I mean, the, the UV rays just did a number on it. So I got some Meguiar's buffing compounds for heavily oxidized uh, RVs and boats. And I'm gonna try that on this. I'm gonna clean it off first with a little bit of cleaner and get, it, uh, get all the dirt off of it. And then, uh, yeah, I got some buffing equipment from Harbor Freight, the uh, buffers, and uh, finding them, <laughs> found them on the return rack, and uh, got a sweet deal on two different sizes. So I'm gonna try those out, see how those go, and then and uh, and then uh, I've got my trusty old ladder here to get me way up here. It's good and safe and sturdy. So uh, yeah, looks like today is going to be a buffing day, and. Um, wholeheartedly a learning experience. So stick with us and uh, come along for the ride. Well, all right, so this is what we got that we're gonna to use to uh, start working on the RV. It just so happens I got these two both at Harbor Freight on the discount rack. Uh, the smaller of the two is a model, this one right here is a six inch. It's a model 1814E- B is in Bravo or dash eight. I don't know which one it is. I think it's a B. And uh, it's a, it uses six inch discs. This is a lot bigger, heftier, seven inch. Variable speeds, has multiple variables, variable speeds here. That is the seven inch. That is model number 1913E-B. That's a 12 amp. It goes from 600 to 3,500 RPMs. Obviously, a seven inch variable speed rotary polisher slash sander. The small one is a 5.7 amp, 2000 to a 6400 RPM. Okay, it looks like it does have the adjustable speeds right there. So it is a variable speed. Also, dual action polisher. Uh, these are, uh, I don't, I do not believe either one of these is random orbital. These are just spin, uh, uh, they just spin. So I will have to be careful not to, not to uh, hold it in one spot where it'll burn. Also on the side over here, what we have is we've got some micro, microfiber towels for wiping and cleaning. That was always suggested on everything we did. Uh, these are my foam pads that go on these. I have six inch ones and seven inch ones. Um, the small six inch, I do have all three, which is, which I do have the fine, the medium, and a coarse. On the seven inch, I only have the fine and the medium. They did not have the coarse, which is fine, which is fine. Uh, this right here is also a buffing pad. I'll be using the buffing pad whenever I use the buffing compound or the oxidation compound. I can get these out of the way. These are the three Meguiar's that came in the kit that I got. The first one is an oxidation remover, which is a uh, Meguiar's number 49. The second one is pure wax, Meguiar's number 56. And the last one is a Meguiar high gloss polish. It is model number 45. Uh, they came as a kit. This is the box it came in. This is the Meguiar's kit that it came into. It is called a Marine and RV Fiberglass Restoration System. Removes the oxidation and eliminates scratches, stains, and water spots. It is also supposed to restore the color while adding gloss and shine, providing a, providing a durable, long-lasting protection. So, well, I guess we'll find out. All right, there's the instructions on how and what order to do them. So, yeah. Looks like a weekend to me. Well, I have to say, even after just cleaning it, you can already tell a lot of the difference. Uh, let me get out of the light. You can already see what's different up on top. Uh, but it is still extremely matte finished. Also, down by the lettering, you can see the discoloration. Whatever the discoloration and, and uh, oxidation is here is over here also 
and uh, as you can see down here also. So definitely got it a lot cleaner, but it is in a matte finish. Uh, uh, that's what I'm using right there. That is a it's a very watered down uh, general multi-purpose cleaner called Fabroso, but it uh, it's very much watered down. Probably about four to one, uh, four times water to one. I don't want to put chemicals on it, but yep, that's pretty much where I'm going to start off. I'm going to leave this side alone. I'm going to tinker with this side and let's see what we get. All right, so videotaping this is going to be a little bit rough, but uh, I'll try to get what I can. I'm going to start out by putting a little bit of of the compound. This is the ox. Okay, this is the oxidation we're doing first. You put a little bit of this compound on after you take the safety lid off first. Ah! compound there. Right now the towel is dry so it's going to take a while to get it to where it's even. I'm going to put it on. I'm going to swirl the first one and then go. buff until it seems dry. I don't know if that's considered dry or not, but first thing I figured out is once you turn it on, it splatters <laughs> off the towel. So it might make a mess in that sense. But I am wondering whether the camera can see the difference up there. Oh yeah. So you can see the shine right there as compared to the dull in, uh, you know, on the rest of it here. So uh, yeah, I'm not gonna sit there and bore you to death by sitting there watching hour upon hour upon hour of me sitting there slinging polish everywhere and um, uh, spending hours doing this because it will take hours to do this. So I'm going to work on this a little bit and then we'll get back and I'll show you some of the results after the, uh, just after the, after the buffing. So, uh, let me get to buffing. All right, I just got finished cleaning the second side with the cleaner. As you can tell, distinct line between the two. And this is just a buffer. I have not waxed or polished that. Tony just brought me out here to show me what he's been working on with buffing out the motorhome that we call Beastie. And I said, oh my gosh, that is unbelievable. I mean, look at that, it looks brand new. So, I just wanted to give my reaction. Crazy. Well, all right. Now it's time for phase three of this uh, journey of cleaning out, uh, cleaning this RV off. Um, number one was to clean it, clean the RV as much as possible. And I actually used a, a cleaner rather than a full just washing so that we got 
every ounce of that uh, grimed in dirt and grimed in muck that was on the coating of this. And so that was phase number one, a big cleaning. That cleaning took almost three days, three evenings of, of cleaning. The front nose took almost a day in, in itself, about four hours. Mainly because of bugs, it's the front of the RV, it gets hit on the road, so it had bugs and just, just everything. So, uh, so it took about three days to do all the way around the RV. We have a 30 footer, so, uh, you know, all the way around. And I also took off a lot of the latches and catches and, and things like that so that when I ran the polishers around them, it didn't tear the wheels up on the polishers and it's easier to polish and, 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 uh, and, and uh, do the waxing and everything going uh, over thing over just where the holes are rather than whenever there's something there. So I took all the, all the locks out of the, all the doors and the hatchways and things like that. So the, by the time I got all that done, got everything washed up, that was about three days. Then I started the buffing. And now that, that oxidation remover by McGuire's number 49 is excellent, excellent. And it works best with a, not the random orbital sander, but also but by using the, strictly the orbital sander. And in my case, mine's a, a seven inch orbital sander using a polishing cloth, which is a wool polish, polishing cloth. It's heavy and it's a workout, but it does the job. And you gotta watch out because it will sling that stuff everywhere. So that way, and I only got the front and the main side where the door is. Now I got those two done and I ran out of polish or buffer. So I had to order some. I went to the hardware stores and the automotive places and they just don't carry it. So I had to order. It's gonna take two days for it to come in. So instead of just sitting around for two days because I need to get this thing done, I'm gonna go ahead and start the polishing of the front and the and of the, the driver's side uh, that we see on that side over there. I'm gonna go ahead with uh, uh, the second stage, or third stage, which is uh, which is a, a polisher. And this one is a high gloss polish. This is a Meguiar's number 45. And then after this, there's one more process. And uh, that is a pure wax, which is a Meguiar's number, uh, I think 56. That will be the last final coat that goes on it. So uh, I am, I'm using my, I'm gonna try the full rotating sander, the seven inch first, see how that goes as opposed to the random orbiter. Uh, if I have to, I'll switch back over to it and try it out. It's a lot lighter, but I need to find out whether, you know, which one has the best shine or has a good shine. So uh, this way I'm gonna start and we'll work from there. I'm not gonna bore you with showing you all the details on this. I am just gonna get to work. Cause like I said, this is gonna take a long time, long time. So, yep. Let me get to it. I don't know if you guys can see the difference in the video, but that is amazing. So shiny and then so dull with that white coating, the oxidation. It looks so awesome. Nice work, Tony. The back is so bad, you have to do it twice. Oh, that's you crazy. Hit it, come back, hit it again. Wow. Oh, the C's coming off the ace. Yeah, this one and this one. Can we glue it back? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. 
Oh, Tony? What? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> it's, it's even blowing in the door. I got to close it or move forward. Oh, it. yeah. You better close the door. Yeah. I think you should just close the door. All right. <laughs> it's raining. The one good thing about having a pole barn, weather doesn't really stop nope. you. Not this kind of weather. Maybe no. a tornado. <laughs> Well, all right, guys, I can finally say that this project is done. By far, I can say this was the most grueling <laughs> and longest project we have ever done to the RV in itself. Comparable to some of the uh, projects we've done here in the shop and the house. Uh, the initial cleaning of the RV and wiping it down and getting all the truck, going over all of the stickers and all the curled stickers, cleaning those off, then getting the, the, the uh, adhesive glue off was very time consuming. And then just the process of going through the oxidation remover, some of the spots, uh, especially on the rear and, and, the, and the front nose uh, had to be hit twice. I had to go over it twice to get all of the oxidation off. It was so bad. The Meguiar's products, the oxidation remover, the high, high, you know, high gloss polish and the pure wax, excellent products. I can't say any, uh, anything bad about those products. The two polishers that I have, the large polisher is uh, with that large polisher with the, um, with the wool pad was the best for the oxidation remover. Uh, but it had a mind of its own. I mean, that thing would go all over. You wrestled that thing, but it was the best. And because there was so much, it would mat down the, uh, the uh, wool on it to the point where it wasn't doing it again. So you'd have to go wash it, clean it off, get all of it out and let it dry before you'd actually start doing it again. So I would definitely recommend that you get two of those pads. Uh, my large polisher, which was a seven, seven inch polisher, was a, a, just a circular polisher sander. And the six inch one that I had worked great for the high gloss uh, polish and the wax where you just put, put foam pads on it to, do the, uh, to, app, uh, to apply those products. Uh, those were great. That one also is a random or orbital sander polisher. So you didn't have near the risk of it burning and also you didn't the, the large one, the seven inch one, because it just spins in one spot, if you got around something like an item that's a door catch or something, it would hit that and go and, and jerk it and, and rip it and it would tear the, tear the cloth off. I spent a lot of time just cleaning the garage after we were done because they had fuzz everywhere from tearing up those cloths. But, uh, uh, but yeah, the prep of getting it clean and getting it ready, I went around and I took off all the hardware on all the doors and you know these latches here, the whole door. I took them all off so that the cleaning process would be uh, easier with that polisher. So that was a long, long project. Uh, then of course, when we were done, we went through. We cleaned all the windows. We put some, uh, we put some windshield uh, cleaner on the windshield, and uh, and yeah, she's a beauty now. I need to clean the top the roof. Get up there and clean that up one day whenever I'm washing. And I also need to clean the awnings off. Can't do them inside the garage here. Luckily, we have a garage to do all this in. Otherwise, we'd be out in the sun. And everything I know about polishing and, and, and uh, putting wax on cars and things, you don't want to do them in direct sunlight. But yeah, uh, we did, I used a tire cleaner to clean the tires off. And, uh, and yeah, we couldn't be any happier. But uh, you know, it's not perfect. You know, there are some swirl spots. There are some spots that didn't get hit all the rest. But man, let me tell you, it's the difference between night and day. Uh, I would, I would suggest that you at least need to do a polish and a wax every year on your RV just to keep it, uh, just to keep it protected, just to keep the coating and the, the gel coat and the stickers and all that, just to help keep those in good condition. Uh, not to mention the fact that I found spots where 
the, the caulking was starting to crack. So I did go back also with uh, a, a clear RTD caulking for RVs and uh, mobile homes and uh, boats, R, uh, RTD caulking, and went around the windows and any of the places that there was cracking, some of the lights uh, where the screws are, uh, there was just no caulking left. So I'll, I was able to spot that, get that before we end up getting some water damage. But yeah, another project done. Hope y'all were able to uh, last it through the whole video. Always hit like and subscribe. Leave us a message, tell us how we're doing or whatever. Give us some suggestions for the next one. But uh, yeah, we've got another one in the bags. Hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching.